What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Andre King. And in today's video, really, I'm just going to take you on a journey in my pursuit of obtaining the CCIE. As it's been a little bit over a year now, last summer, of course, I was able to finally become CCIE number 67564. And many of you, of course, have continued to uh, congratulate me and actually let me know in one of the comments that uh, that time had approached. And so I appreciate that. And uh, this video definitely isn't going to be for everybody. No editing, no cutting, um, no background music or anything. Just me and my candid thoughts. And hopefully by the end of the video, you'll learn a little bit about my journey and what makes it a little bit different. A lot of folks have asked, what did it get me or, you know, what positions or raises, et cetera, did I get? And then I'll also probably look to say um, what I think is next, not only for Cisco, uh, but in their whole portfolio of different offerings of what it holds for the future. And so I think we just need to really start with uh, the CCIE and uh, what it entails. A lot of aspiring network enthusiasts, of course, begin their journey with the CCNA for various reasons. They may have been told that if you pass that test, you'll definitely get a job making 60, 70 K or Cisco's the number one networking company in the world. Or if you get a Cisco CCNA and keep getting your CCMP, the sky's the limit. And any statement in and of itself is not going to be the truth for everyone in the big macro sense. And so that's the thing that um, 10 years ago when I was studying, like I definitely held true to just hearing those one line statements and it would just kind of set me off on on a win and I would just keep my head down and doing it. The second thing is also each of us, um, when we ask for advice, what's what should I do next? Should I go down this CCMP track? If I do this, like the honest answer is like no one can really tell you like what is next in your life but yourself. Um, you know yourself better than anyone else. You know whether you make a timeline for getting milestone A, B, C, if you're going to meet that. And it's all up to you. Um, sometimes the cards don't line up at that moment, but it doesn't mean that somewhere down the line, whatever you are seeking will or won't happen. Um, so you really have to hear those opinions from everyone. And at the end of the day, make the best decision for yourself and know your why. That's one of the strongest things um, we know, to be quite honest, that money or salary, the earning potential for any of these certifications, not just the Cisco certs, typically are what influence a lot of us to start that journey or to continue a journey towards the pursuit of a certification. And I was no different. So I want to take you back. Um, I had a video, I'll actually link it up here, where I shared, I logged into uh, my Cisco account and showed every Cisco attempt that I had. And from memory, I, I think I had over 30 attempts at a combination of Cisco voice, AKA collaboration, security, design, routing and switching, and even wireless. Um, I think I might've made a pass at CCNA data center way back when, um, but those were the tracks that interest me. And of course it changed uh, what was in front of me from the different companies and working overseas 10 plus years of my adult life. It just depended on uh, what the job was needing or what the market was. But I would say that 2012 slash 13, yeah, that's my entry into uh, networking. My very first uh, position, I had always wanted to get into IT. My aunt who lives up the street in Woodbridge, Virginia, when I was in high school, she had all these books, Cybex, I don't think I don't know if Cisco Press, I'm sure they were out back then, but she just had all these IT books. And I would, like I said before, I would crack open a book and read 10, 15 pages late at night and be bored. None of it hit me. I didn't understand it. But I just knew, again, she made a lot of money working at the Pentagon. And so being 11, 12th grade, I said, you know, high school graduate of 2000, I said, well, what what is there for me? So I always had the dream of um, doing IT. And then, of course, we fast forward to 9-11, and that's when my life, of course, took a turn from getting pulled out of college to, of course, serving our nation and the uh, U.S. Army. And so those next five to 10 years were a little bit different. 
they took me down a different path. Um, and it was a path that also um, allowed me to see overseas contracting. And so that's what I pursued, but more so in the military, I was actually a heavy equipment operator, uh, big forklifts, uh, wretch or rough terrain container handlers and 30K forklifts, just, just moving containers, T-walls, jersey barriers, food for our troops, just, just moving whatever they needed moved around the bases in Iraq and Afghanistan, um, probably eight to nine different countries, but early on those were pretty much the companies or countries that I was helping uh, support our troops. And so a lot of memories there, but let's fast forward to um, around 08, 09. That's when, you know, the world started changing a little bit. I always say that really, you can say there's fourth paradigm, or but think about a pyramid. Um, at the base, back then for me, there's always going to be education, certifications, and experience. The fourth one, you may say, are intangibles or things like that. But when I was studying back then, like most people would say, and or we, we saw it, um, you know, people always, not to say luck up, but they'll have hookups or whatever. But uh, I would say education was at the top of that pyramid. Like a lot of recruiters and companies needed that bachelor's degree. So that's why I stayed in school and went down the path of online degrees to get that. Check that box off. Um, next, back then, I would say certification started overtaking the experience. So that's why I started pursuing the Network Plus and then my CCNA. And it took uh, it took three to four months to get, I think my track was, I, back then you could split the CCNA up, ICND 1 and 2. So I did that. Then I did my CCNA security, maybe. And then I went towards my CCMP. But by then, I was actually at a place called Camp Bastion or Camp Leatherneck, working with the Marines in Afghanistan. And I was help desk. And the help desk um, taught me so, so much. I got to hear all the tickets. And that's why I say right now, if you start at a, in a support role, but keep your eye on where you want to be. It's nothing wrong with that. Just to get your foot in the door, A, to start learning about servers, security, pot, like all the tickets that come in or the calls, you got an opportunity to be the first line. And even if you got to kick it to another team, you at least get to read what a customer is reporting, et cetera. And over time, that knowledge base or that repository um, on whatever system you use, you can always go back and see what the solution was to that problem, even if it got... Uh, move to another team's board. And so I saw very early on, probably after four months, I was imaging computers there. I think we were going from Windows XP to 7 or 7, 8, something like that, but was building that um, disestigged image for the Marines there. And so it's a lot of walking in the dust and the dirt around there. And, you know, you get to those small groups. Um, but the network team was probably, I mean, I worked at MEF headquarters, but it was probably we would go out the gate, make a right, and then hook a left and show our ID. Probably four to five minute walk. And the network team, you know, they had two or three containers there that they sat in to manage the uh, campus. So long story short, once I started getting that CCNA and, and showing my interest, I would half the day hang out over there and um, walk on different tickets, have the switches in my hand, though I was just a help desk technician. The job afforded me to help them and learn on the job. Never got the rights to uh, make any changes, but I could sit beside them and start learning. Oh, this is what I'm learning in the books versus the labs, but this is what it really looks like on the job. And so that's another thing when, when um, folks will sometimes say, just take a volunteer job or do some something for free. I know it sucks hearing that, but sometimes you, A, you get to see it and learn it for yourself, how it's done in the real world. But B, the world, truthfully, as you get to live and be older, a lot of it is about building those relationships. I'm an introvert, but a lot of people wouldn't know that. Um, but when I'm outside of this house or whatever, I'm a, not to say I'm a different person, but but I know that I have to like act and operate a little bit differently um, to build those relationships that can you know, symbiotic, we can help each other. And so that's what got me the job because they said, hey, if you get your CCMP, 
you're going to have to trust us. This was the company, um, Rockwell Collins. And long story short, Rockwell Collins had the help desk and there was something else we had. And then TCS had the, um, the SATCOM, the network engineering jobs and security engineering. So they did, they had an informal alliance where they wouldn't compete on the other ones. So if we wanted to do network engineering, I had to leave Rockwell, go back to the States, apply for a TCS job and, um, hope that it worked out like it would and then fly back a month later. So long story short, I finally got my CCMP. I'm ready to work now. So I flew back to the States and then, um, was it GDIT or Lockheed first? I think it was at that point, GDIT had the contract, but they happened to have an offer too. And so long story short, they offered it. That's when I came back to Kandahar at that time. And I had showed in one of the videos, a book, G. Gettings, Gordon, one of the Cisco books there. Um, that's where I met Gordon. He was one of the four network engineers on that job. And so um, really, I know I'm talking and like I said, this video is definitely not going to be uh, for everybody. I'm at 11 minutes already. Um, but then that was my first network role was a networking. Again, I'm not big on titles, networking, whatever you want to call it. But um, my very first day, I remember getting a ticket, helping the Air Force out and their rotations. I don't think it was every six weeks, but they rotated way more frequently than the Army or Marines. Um, but long story short, we needed to go set up a switch stack. I don't think we needed to change the router. And, you know, there's an unclass and classified network. And I remember Mark, the lead, saying, hey, like, go go, go put together the go or the grab bag. And he's like, get a MTR, M, MTRJ to SC. Um, K, or no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It would be MTRJ to LC because... Patch panel side can be anything, LC, SC, termination, or MTRJ. Switch side is uh, typically LC. Some weird old GBICs are actually uh, SC, but I had no clue. Like, I'm learning CCNA, CCMP. I had never at that time seen that in a book where they showed the connector. He's like, oh, well, just look for the orange cable, because certain cables were, you could easily tell 95% of the time it would be that. And so that was day one. And then, you know, we get there. I didn't help do the configs. We have to do the cabling. So a lot of that job over the next year and a half um, at that camp, at that role, was learning layer one and getting sweet, getting nasty with layer one, actually introducing a spanning tree loop, which they always say is a fireable offense. It's hard to get fired in Afghanistan and then wait three, four months for somebody else. But, but admitting it, always take responsibility for what you do. And um, so I've seen a lot of um, different things there, layer one, layer two. And then my next opportunity, I actually worked in Dubai when I got a promotion. And so I went to the UAE um, and Abu Dhabi was actually where the camp was there. But that's where I started getting more sweet into routing. And Darren Lindsay, it's weird. I got some of his CCI books. Um, Darren Lindsay did something that I'll always remember. He Well, he offered me the job to work in Dubai for two years. And um, and he was, uh, I think Darren was from like Iowa. He's from middle America, but middle of the country. Um, and I didn't know it at first, but what he did was he used the production network as not his lab, but the CC. He, he got his CCIE. He was the first in-person CCIE I'd ever met. But the ideas of the design, when it's time to do it on the production network, he pretty much incorporated the, the production network was his lab for introducing like a full stack layer three. A lot of times back then it was the three, not say three tier, but it was the access layer, the distribution layer and the core. But the access layer was always layer two where your phones, your switches, your computers, et cetera. Like there were not a lot of architects that designed a network that were layer three, where there was like EIGRP or OSPF that basically learned the routes and uh, formed those neighborships all the way through. Typically, it was at the distribution or the core level where you first saw that it would just be either a default gateway command or a quad zero IP route to whatever that SVI was on the distro that for 10 plus years, 
this was the typical um, type of topology that you would see. Um, always trade-offs, pros and cons for doing something a certain way. And um, so for a lot of us, it was it was harder to troubleshoot some of those issues, especially on the classified side when you introduce tack lanes. But got a little bit better with that. And then as I continued to go, I won't bore you with this, but went to Oman next, came back to Dubai. Um, then I went to Jordan. Then I came back to Afghanistan and started hopping around different bases. But I saw different networks. I saw how folks did different things. And there is no substitution for that on-the-job experience. And I know it took me a long time to get to uh, 12 minutes or whatever, but um, a certification is, is cool and all. But now, 2015, 16, 17, the experience is now at that pyramid that I'm talking about. Education is going down a notch. And since then, I think experience is at the top. Experience is at the top. Certification today. And today, I really think top of the pyramid, they're looking for experience, certifications, and then education. And that'll be fluid or dynamic, and it's not a one piece. But at the macro level, when I look at the the way of the IT field today, at least in networking, I think that's what, it doesn't matter if a job posting says, need 12 to 15 years experience this, need this certification, bachelors, they don't say recommend it, but you know, the ideal, like, at the end of the day, when you get on the phone with the recruiter and you start talking, the points that they want to hear is more so not to say the way you think, but they, they need to you need to we need to be able to convey um, or articulate over that call or email that we've worked in an environment where we were able to assist with ABC. We recognize this and then we propose this solution as a team. Try to not say I so much, um, but we were able to do this, this and this. We learned from this mistake. We mitigated this, and now the uh, network is operating at such and such, 20% improved this, tickets were at this. Now we implemented this one process, and we see over time that we reduced uh, the number of calls. from. So if you get your mind to start thinking about that more in the um, how did I and my team um, basically implement different processes or configurations, et cetera, that can showcase that, not that I know what I'm talking about, but that no matter where I get dropped in a network that has Dell switches, HP, Juniper, Fortinet, it doesn't matter that I still understand the fundamentals of layer two, layer three, security, et cetera. And there might be something that you don't say it on a call, but you might need to look at this, this, and this, but the fundamentals are gonna remain the same. The bits, the bytes, the headers, the protocols that we use, TCP, IP stack, um, all of those things. So it doesn't matter. It's vendor agnostic. And so that's what it is. So I know I got so, so much more to say, and I'm getting long winded here. But like I said, this video is definitely not going to be for everybody. Um, but um, my journey then brought me home. And well, let me hurry up here. So my last job in Afghanistan was actually outside of Kabul. And unfortunately, I try not to talk about when we lost lives. Um, yeah, I'll leave that out where I was staying. But um, but we were actually supporting the Special Forces, so we lived off base um, at the last position. And we were working hand in hand with uh, the Afghanis and to protect him as well. They, One of the things a lot of my Afghani counterparts said is they don't like us to share their name. But we worked with um, one young guy. He was probably 24, 25. Brilliant guy, Af Afghan. He's 100% Afghan. He lived there. But um, learned a lot from him, and we worked together with him. And we supported the MOI, the Ministry of Interior, and the MOD, Ministry of Defense. And so our team there, um, IAP, we did a lot of great work. But towards the end, he and I and um, another one of my friends, uh, we, we started studying for the CCIE. And... Um, like I said, I gave the truth is I my first attempt was in Dubai, and beautiful facility, of course. Um, I thought I was ready, but in hindsight, I was probably sixty five percent equipped, just total for where I needed to be. And the second part of it, I actually walked out. I didn't finish my test there, 
second attempt was in Raleigh during maybe a year later. Um, flew down to Raleigh before they consolidated to Richard, Texas. And, but you could take it in Raleigh um, back then or in Cali. And that one, I, I, like I felt, I always go and feel an 80 to 90%. Um, but in hindsight, I was a little bit bit more equipped. And I finished that whole thing. But by the end, like I knew my, it's like math. Like you check your answers. Like there's a way to check every question. And so I knew my verifications weren't there. So I had started working more in the cloud, cybersecurity ranges, things like that. So I kind of got away from Cisco. And that's why when folks ask me, pivoting to the second part of what did getting the CCI get you, my, my, it's a bit different. It's not about whether you believe me or not, but at that point in my life, 2018, 2019, like um, my daughter was, of course, born in 2019 and um, just things were different. So the money didn't play as big a part because I was more at the architect role at that position, more cloud agnostic, well, not cloud agnostic, but vendor agnostic. So we had Cisco in our environment, but I was not O&M. I was not operations. It's more the design side. And so it just hit me one day that, you know, I had, there's another book up there. I forget the name of it. Um, it's, it's not to say it's fake, but it's like CCIE in eight weeks. And all it is, is instead of the Cisco press book being like this, it's very consolidated. And it's a summary of the, it's not like bulleted listing, but it's trying to take you down the paths. And so I said, eh, this is spurring something inside of me, but can I commit with my young daughter here at home? And so I was like, you don't, you don't need it for your job, but there's all one. It's hard to describe to somebody, but when you, if you ever get one CCI attempt, and the Lord lets you live long enough, like not everybody, but for me, I'm like, I'm gonna get it one day. So it's like, it's a dream that you don't let die. And like I said, I didn't need it for it. Still don't need it for the job. So long story short, I committed about six to nine months, early mornings and um, all weekends were weekends were eight to 12 hours and committed. And so it took a lot to get there, but I was way more confident going there. And again, by the end of the test um, and the, the it had changed back then, it was two parts. Now it's three. I think they added that diagnostics part. And so it was a great feeling flying back and just feeling confident that everything checked out. But like I said, fast forward to the questions about um, how is it looking at one of the questions that says um, from Prodigal Son 3 and did getting your CCMP and then CCIE open endless opportunities and job. And like I said, if I had got my CCIE in 2015, 14, 18, it's different. There were companies that would hire you just to use your CCIE. You wouldn't even work, work, work. They would just need you on staff and give you like a small salary so that they could get discounts from Cisco. Like a lot of us knew about those kind of things. Some people would get it just for that, but it was a lot more money to be made. I won't say a lot more, but now you still can make a great um, salary from a CCIE. Not to say there's less positions or now, but the world, rest of the vendors of the world has caught up. And then... 2024 vice 2021, as you all know, the tech field is just different. Companies are holding what they got. There's um, hiring freezes. Salaries, of course, have come down. So it's always relative and subjective. And when you ask this question now, and if we were to look at this three years, it'd be different. So that's why getting into tech, we always have to know, or as best we can, know our why. Like if it, because if it's just money. It's an endless loop that you'll never be fulfilled. So there has to be something more than that. And so network your future. These last three to four years, I've always tried to find a way, still messing with stuff here and there, a way to give back, a way to mentor, a way to do some videos, a way to do a co- like all these things in my head or ideas and trying to figure that out. And i um, got to stop beating myself about trying to find the perfect solution and just help. So um for me, it is come full circle, and it's about trying to give back and be a part of the community and things like that. Even in my consultant role now, like I said, we, of course, have Cisco. We need to know about it, but it's not the only vendor in the portfolio. And I'll always love Cisco. I'll always appreciate them because they play such a key role in my work experience, my work life. Forever grateful, forever thankful. 
And we we won't ever. Well, I won't say anybody, but I'm not an emer, emeritus, emeritus, emeritus. I think you got to be ten or fifteen. But so every three years, I I got to do something. So this year, I started studying. Our late last year, I tried doing the seaside security path uh, for two months and just couldn't stick with it. I tried the data center for about a month. I looked at DevNet, so it, it I'll, I'll probably take even another six months off. Um, but maybe next year I will f- commit a whole year. And I think for me, the DevNet path makes the most sense the way the world is going. But to be quite frank and honest, and this is speaking outside looking in and partial, I don't know any CSA DevNet. I don't see a lot of organizations that I know that fully take advantage of its capabilities. But it's going to be another one of those things where I think, not to say it's a niche, because I, I I love what Cisco is continuing trying to do, but the embrace or the adoption of that um, by a lot of organizations, I think I've not seen it yet. Um, that's just where I look. I could be wrong. So it's not different. It's not one of those mature technologies like basic, well, I won't say basic, but routing and switching or defensive security um, the, the the things were physical hardware, and that's another. It's a layer of abstraction because it's a lot of its code programmability. Um, so it's different for some organizations to realize the value, the added benefits when it's not like, well, those 15 switches, routers, firewalls, et cetera, provide our staff this. They bring the company that. They ensure that this doesn't happen, et cetera. Um, so, but I, but I still think with all that being said, it's the one that I need to do, um, but that remains to be seen. I'll, I'll somehow share the journey probably late this winter. Jobs typically slow down November, December holiday time, and that's where I make my money when it comes to studying and preparing for certs um, towards the end of the year, but we'll see. Um, as far as what I see on the horizon, um, CCIE by far, the lab, I mean, I dare, I won't say not, not challenging it, but I I don't, I've not taken every cert under the sun, but you heard earlier, there's at least 30 plus attempts for just Cisco CISSP. When I took it, it was 10 domains. I think it's eight now. Still pretty brutal testing on itself because of the way two answers will always look right. It's it's very different kind of test. PMP was very diff- difficult, failed the first time past the second, but I used to go, I remember when I was ready was when, and I don't remember, it's been five years, 47, 48, how many processes there were. I would just go to everyone's board and just start writing them down underneath the five uh, different initiating, operating, closing, whatever. But So these tests are difficult in and of themselves, but this eight hour exam by Cisco, not just grueling on the body, but even if if someone really probably if someone knew everything, I don't. It's it's just hard to even type all of that and validate it. It's it's just it's um your wits have to be about you. If something doesn't go right here, you have to. And people can say that sounds so easy, but um the CCIE will will remain. I think for the foreseeable future, one of the hardest. And you can look at the numbers. It's, Number starts with six, seven. There's less than two, two thousand or twenty five hundred that get this around the whole world every year. Any cert where there's only any given day eight or nine people in the whole world getting it, like it's it still remains relevant from an integrity standpoint. Um, but that pursuit of knowledge and those things that I spoke about earlier, um, knowing your why, truly learning on the job, and then whether you're, you're asking me or a question about how do I study this or that, another piece of advice, and this is for production either, that I tell folks often is we, we have come up, those of us that have been in the game for a bit, we hear the phrase possibly fail early, fail often, which basically means like don't be afraid of, you know, failure because failure is, it's weird to hear that failure equates to success. But if you go through life, always playing it safe or being content. Like, this is the way we do our calls. These three scripts, these are the same three every day. But what if somebody asks you this? How do you respond? Like, you'll never know. So 
it's part of that is just like on a switch. I wonder what happens if I pull this system tray out, if I pull this fan out while it's operating. Hey, it's got two redundant power supplies. I log in, it says they're both active. The fan tray's okay. What if I pull it like, I'm not saying do that on a core switch or anything, but there was a point in my life where I wasn't rebellious or anything, but the only way that I would ever find out, because back then we're not paying for no $30,000 switch for a home. And I love that virtualization and emulation, emulation came along to help us study. But back then you had to have physical gear. You had to order it off eBay to study for your exam. And folks now studying, you, you, you're very fortunate. I'm very fortunate to be still alive to get to a world where you can practice for free, whether it's Eve, NG, or packet, packet tracer, packet, whatever it's called. Yeah, like all of these different things. Um, so, like I said, just don't be afraid to mess up on a config, figure it out, um, save a snapshot, redo it again. But when you get to a production network or on the job, don't limit your, like, again, like, I'm not, I'm not saying reboot a production switch or router this. I'm, in the logical sense, I'm probably getting hung up on my words of how to, how to say don't be afraid. But, um, but on the job, it's those people that are curious that continue to pursue knowledge, et cetera, that in the long run, um, they end up bringing more value typically to an organization um, than the person that just shows up at eight clocks out at five. Even if they gave 100%, they don't put anything extra into it. And like I said, I'm not knocking anybody for how they are or what they do. All of our minds, all of our habits work a little bit differently. So be yourself at the end of the day. But like I said, have that, keep that curiosity like a kid and uh, don't be afraid to learn from your mistakes. Fellas, I guess that's what I'm needing to get to, because it's um, at the end of the day, that's that's where in any industry, music, anything, it's when something's not right, but you continue to go back and perfect your craft, et cetera, and all that sweat equity will eventually pay off. So I think I've been talking long enough, but like I said, it's been a little bit over a year and just wanted to talk more in depth about that path. I mean, I could talk for hours and I felt like there's so much missing from that. Um, but I know if you've made it this far into the video, like you're a real one. And I really, really, really do appreciate all of your support. We all have life that um, continues to kick us here and there, but we get up each day and study. And like I said, it's to all of you that are studying or pursuing any of these tracks, like my, my hat goes off to you um, because I can't, I'm not going to say, hey, my, I know what it means because I did ABC. Each of our journey is a little bit different. But if you're thinking about giving it up, I just want to encourage you that um, this field has, has hands down been, if I were to leave this world today, it'd be not the CCA itself, but just being a part of this tech community and more um, small, the the networking community has been um, a big part of my life and it took me around the world. It allowed me to meet so many people from different cultures, um, lifelong associates. I don't have too, too many friends, but, but it helped me to see the world in a different way. This is a different video for that as well. And so there's a lot of um, unexpected opportunities that I think you could get if you're open to it as well by, um, joining it's not a fraternity but but by becoming a member of the networking community and and like i said the last thing i like i said i i think too that maybe what i if 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 everybody made the same amount of money if everybody if if if, if someone just said what's your passion other than teaching and mentoring and giving back in this field i at one point it was voice at one point it was wireless and I think out of the two now, it would I'd have to get back into wireless because I did never conquer that domain and get past a professional level. I didn't ever study, forget the cert, studying for an expert level, but I didn't look at um, certain radio free. Like once you understand the fundamentals, I, I get it, but it's easy to forget some of those things: the amplitude, the dBm, two point four versus the five gigahertz. Um, like just moving different bands around 20 between each that, you know, 
I'll always have these fundamentals with me, but being able to design like a wireless network for a football stadium or um, a community or like that would be a great challenge that I would definitely, but to understand like while I'm doing it and use a tool like Ekahow or something like that for wireless surveying and mapping. Um, I love data center, but I don't think that's for me. Security comes and goes. We always, as network engineers, need to know a little bit about of it anyway. That's why you'll see folks call themselves network slash security engineers. And like I said, voice voice is now a cloud, a mystery to me. There's a point where the earlier CUCMs, um, cubes, and um, where that was my first rack. Like I said, that was two hundred fifty dollars. I was in Dubai. I brought it on eBay. Shipping and handling was expensive to get it there, but there's a little small um, push around, maybe, I don't know, 2022U rack that I got that came with like three phones, three switches, and a router, um, 1821 or something. Um, that's in the basement. But voice was my first fascination. I wouldn't say love, but because I didn't ever get a job just doing it. But now as I progress in my career and age, I think I do need to start going back and um, somehow figuring it out. I don't know what I'm saying, but I, like I said, I think wireless would be uh, what's next for me. But this has been, like I said, I'm just rambling now, 36, 37 minutes. And um, I definitely appreciate and love each and every one of you out there. I encourage you to just hit me up in chat. Um, I need to, like I started responding to this uh, young person right here, not you know, well, his son might be a man, but prodigal son three. And I thought about just making a video for it. Then I thought, well, I got my CCI a year ago, so let me just get on this camera and just start talking. And so I'll probably finish writing this response here. And again, apologies, but as you can see, he wrote this six days ago. And I used to be very great with keeping up with the comp, but I've not been doing as much content, and that's shame on me as well. Um, so I'm not logged into this account when I'm looking at YouTube videos. So I, apologies, I don't get this notification. But I, like I said, I, that's apologies, my bad on me. And I appreciate you guys writing. But I say that, I say that, and then I'm going to say, but I really do want to see the comments because they spur um, not only on what I may need to make content or videos about, but part of me giving back is not just through trying to make a course or something like that. But just to respond to someone with the advice or knowledge or experience that I have. So, again, thank you guys that do that as well. Um, but this is my last goodbye. Like I said, it's, it's a no edited video, just straight upload. And, uh, again, um, just wishing each and every one of you the best out there. Just each day, just grow a little, even if it's inch, centimeter, millimeter. Just keep moving ahead. And, and people try to say if you pause, is wrong. Keep moving. Sometimes you take a pause, but just don't make it too long. Sometimes you go backwards, but keep the momentum. Try to keep the momentum going forward. There's nothing wrong with that. And um, listen to yourself at the end of the day. I know sometimes when you haven't worked in the field of this or that, you're like, how would I know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but there's an internal compass and um, something that's guiding us each and every day when if the world was quiet and you could live in a world of silence. So Listen to whatever that is, and uh, you can make mistakes in life if the Lord lets us live long enough. Just be man or woman enough to admit your mistake. And it doesn't have to be a mistake, but just the path you go down, just know that it, it's not the only or the ultimate path. So, again, but thank each and every one of you out there for rocking and hearing me today. And until next time, stay safe, take care of yourselves. Peace. <laughs>